Hi, this is Tom, W8JI, and um, I made a couple videos today and shot some pictures while I was testing some coax connectors. I was troubleshooting a 75 meter antenna that was um, breaking down when I would run the uh, amplifier on the antenna. So I, I thought it would be a good idea to show everybody how I check coax connectors and the type of connectors I use. I know everybody likes to use Amphenol connectors and they're really good connectors. The connector on the right is an Amphenol and the connector on the left is a Teflon silver plated uh, knockoff of the Amphenol and uh, it actually is a, is a pretty good connector. It tests superior to any Amphenol connector that I've tested and it has exact fit uh, it's exactly identical to the Amphenol mechanically. If we look at these connectors carefully, uh, the um, the knockoff uh, connector is uh, in the foreground and the Amphenol is in the background. The, the uh, connector in the foreground is silver plated, has a silver plated pin, and it has exactly the same dimensions, the same soldering holes and everything as the Amphenol connector. The difference is that the connector in the foreground has a good Teflon insulation with a, with a lot wider gap than the uh, Anthemanol connector. If we look down inside the connector, this is where the rubber meets the road. We see that the um, uh, connector on the left, uh, which is real Teflon insulation, has a good air gap and rounded uh, no real sharp corners or anything that promote arcing uh, so this helps the connector hold off a whole lot of voltage. The other advantage of the connector is that the Teflon insulation is very uh, resistant to heat so you can get the connector pretty hot. You might ruin the coax but you won't ruin the uh, uh, the connector body. It makes it a little easier to reuse the connector. makes it a lot easier to solder the connector too without uh, damaging things. I test every connector that I get. It doesn't matter what type, barrels or whatever. One of the first things I test them for is the high voltage leakage and the high voltage breakdown. You would be surprised. Uh, you can go to a ham fest and buy connectors and put them on a high voltage tester and measure the leakage current into the connector and some of them start to leak at just a few hundred volts. The connector insulation actually starts to break down and conduct at just a few hundred volts. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I think UHF type connectors get such a bad reputation. The, you, can buy, uh, you can buy a connector and, and uh, it can be a knockoff and it can be a really bad connector that really isn't any good at all and uh, uh, at the, on the other hand you can buy a connector and it can be a great connector. Uh, it can be better than an Amphenol and hold up better at, at power or with moisture or anything um, if, it's, uh, if it's just made better. So one of the ways I do this is uh, test these connectors is with a little homemade a uh, high voltage tester that lets me run the voltage up and measure the leakage current into the connector. Let's watch a video that I made while I'm turning the voltage up on this particular connector. This is one of the Teflon uh, PL259 UHF connectors that I use. Okay, this is um, a, a Teflon UHF connector connected up to a high pot tester that goes up to 15,000 volts. So I'm going to uh, start running the voltage up on my tester. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. There you go, 10,000 volts. It's at 10,000 volts, it's arcing. Now it's ionized inside the connector, so there's ionized air, so I'm going to back it off. 9,000, it's still arcing. About 8,500, it quits arcing. So that's a Teflon. That's what the connector will do if you put everything else on it correctly.
the important thing here is that this makes the connector the highest voltage breakdown part of the system so other things will go first you know the cable might uh, go at uh, 5,000 or 6,000 volts it depends on what kind of cable you have uh, barrel connectors will go at less voltage they'll arc over at less voltage and fail but the connector itself is has got a lot of headroom so that makes the connector reliable now let's look at a UHF connector or the female connector and see how the female connector acts in, uh, in conjunction with the UHF male connector. Okay, now we're going to test this with a UHF connector, a Teflon UHF connector, good quality Teflon UHF connector, connected to a mediocre SO239 chassis mount connector and see what happens. I'm at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, it ticked once, there you go, 8,000, there you go, about 8,500 volts is the breakdown now with it paired to a UHF female connector. Okay, now I'm going to um, add a, um, a UHF barrel connector. And uh, it's a fairly good quality uh, UHF barrel connector. Um, they're all never really as good as the uh, as the uh, UHF male and the UHF female by themselves. So let's check one of them and see how we do. To get into this uh, type of connector with my high voltage tester, I have to um, uh, use a good, uh, well insulated wire and apply the high voltage to the wire and and have the wire stuck inside the uh, uh, the connector far enough that the uh, that it doesn't arc from any of the wire strands to the uh, connector shell okay let's start out here I had the voltage up a little bit we'll start out again now now I have a barrel uh, I have a barrel connector here on my high pot uh, tester and we'll start out here 1,000 2,000 3 right there that's at 3,000 and you can see where the failure point is the failure point is the close spacing between the center pin which is uh, let me get a screwdriver and show you between this center pin right here and where they folded over on the outside of the insulation to retain the insulation that makes that sharp edge there between these two makes the uh, breakdown point for the failure arc over failure of the connector they'll handle a ton of current so the problem is how much voltage they'll handle and this one's failing at just almost 4,000 volts is where it's arcing Now I know there's a lot of uh, stuff on the internet and other places about the loss of these connectors. And I'm going to tell you, it's really hard to measure the loss in a, in a UHF style connector uh, below a few hundred megahertz, uh, even with really good test equipment. If the connector, let's look at it logically, if the connector was lossy and it dissipated a lot of power, um, you know, if it had a tenth of a dB loss or some other number that people come up with, the connector would get at at a thousand watts or fifteen hundred watts. The connector would get so hot, the connector would just just uh, melt. So there there really isn't that much loss inside the connectors. They're, they have uh, um, and they actually don't add very much impedance bump either if all the surrounding uh, uh, interface is designed correctly. The biggest problem is getting the um, connections into and out of the UHF connector system uh, rather than than a half inch or inch long uh, bump of about 35 ohms that's in the UHF female connector. The males are, are uh, almost perfect but the females uh, uh, are down around 35 ohms.
as long as that's short, as long as that length is not too long in uh, wavelengths, then it really doesn't affect the standing wave ratio very much at all. So they're really only an issue when you get up above four or 500 megahertz. So let's compare the uh, voltage breakdown of a UHF uh, style connector system to a uh, type of N connector. I'll put an N on here and we'll run the voltage up and see what we get. Okay, and here's a classic uh, N connector. And it's everything's made up an N connector exactly like it should be. I used a, a good cable going into the a good RG8 type cable going into the uh, end connector. This is how you have to get the high voltage into one of these to test them. <clears throat> you can't really grab a hold of the, of the pin. So I'll run the voltage up. Here's a thousand volts, 1500. There you go, 1800 volts. It's at 1800 volts, it's firing the tester. So an end connector, that's peak voltage too, by the way, 1800 volts peak. So an end connector um, can handle roughly in the 1500 to 2000 volt range. And the females are just as strong as the males as far as voltage breakdown. So don't get me wrong or take any of this stuff out of context. I'm not saying that the end connector is a bad connector. It's a good connector. It has its place. The weatherproofing of the connector itself, if you don't do anything externally, is better than the uh, UHF style connector. Um, but the problem with an end connector is the center pin and the shell around the center pin are almost exactly the same size as a as a uh, standard little BNC connector. So the, the closest point in a system, the closest two points and how sharp those points are, the radius of any uh, of uh, the metal inside that's uh, where the potential difference is, if it's, if it's, if it's sharp and, and uh, pointed, or if it's just close spaced, it's going to have a lot less voltage breakdown than something that's rounded and uh, spaced further apart. So that's the Achilles heel of an end connector. If you want a high power connector and, it's, and you don't want to tolerate the 35 ohm uh, or so impedance bump uh, that you have in a, in a uh, less than an inch or an inch of uh, connector area in a UHF connector, then you can go to one of the more expensive uh, uh, type of uh, connectors. But if you're going to run high power, um, anybody running high power, I sure, I would get a really good UHF connector, not a piece of junk, because there's a lot of garbage out there, but I would get a really good, uh, well-made uh, uh, UHF type connector, and you really can't go wrong with that for, for stuff uh, two meters and down. Thanks for putting up with this video. I thought while I had all my test equipment out and was doing stuff, my cell phone handy, that I'd shoot a little quick video and uh, show people how I test the connectors. And if you buy a good quality UHF connector and you don't buy some kind of garbage, uh, they're really pretty good. If you get garbage, they're big trouble. So you just have to watch which connector you get. Their uh, UHF connectors are pretty much all anybody needs if they if they uh, work uh, say below the two meter band they'll handle a ton of power and uh, uh, as long as you weatherproof them they're a real good connector